Hey everyone, welcome to Social Media Unpacked, a show about social media designed to keep you in the loop about what's new, what's trending, and what that means for you. I am your lovely host, Nephi Anderson. I'm a social media strategist and reporter who specializes in helping entrepreneurs and brands use multimedia storytelling to reach their business goals. Today, we have a ton of great topics to cover, including, but not limited to, Instagram's algorithm change, Pinterest pivot to video, the launch of Facebook campus, and so much more. I know if you're anything like me, you wear a lot of hats, not just in business, but in life. And by default, marketing is one of them. So take plenty of notes. And when talking about this show on social media, please use the hashtag social media unpacked and be sure to tag me at Nephi Anderson so I can show you some love. Let's start with what's new. Facebook is returning back to its college roots just in time for the start of the new school year with the launch of Facebook Campus, a dedicated section on the Facebook app exclusively for college students who are currently in school or alumni who have graduated within the past five years. Now, as you may or may not know, Facebook originally launched in 2004 as an app that was exclusively for Ivy League college students. Since then, it has expanded to everyone else, and now it's returning back to its origins to let those that are in college have a dedicated space on the app to exclusively connect. Now, although this college-only space is located within a tab in the regular Facebook app, you need a college-verified email address in order to gain access. I know you're probably saying to yourself, okay, what makes Facebook Canvas different than Facebook? Well, for starters, on Facebook campus, you have a completely different profile. So your profile includes your college grade, your major, your graduation date. They really created this section of the app in order for students in college to connect with each other online. Now, I know you must be saying to yourself, okay, what makes Facebook campus different than the regular Facebook? Well, first of all, you have a completely different user profile. So on Facebook campus, your Facebook profile includes their enrolled classes you're in, your major, your graduation date. It really is a space for you to connect with other students that attend your college or university in a digital space. Now, also, one great thing to know is that there is a college-only news feed, which means that you are not going to be scrolling by and seeing posts from your mom, your sister, your friends from high school, or whoever, unless they go to your school. But also, with that being said, you should probably also know that you cannot post to your news feed. There's no such thing as you posting or uploading a photo of yourself or writing a status in your news feed. The only way that you can post or upload things are in chat rooms, and they're real-time chat rooms created for you to connect with students on campus around stuff in real time. So you can create chat rooms around groups, events, dorms, study hall, classes, whatever you want. So whenever you're posting, you're posting in a chat room and not to a feed. That's one major thing that you should know. You should also know that on Facebook campus, there is no advertising. So you're not gonna see a pop-up for books or shoes or clothes or some random makeup or hair or whatever it may be. On Facebook campus, it is advertising free. So everything that you see is gonna be relevant to the, the college or the school that you're going to. One of the great features of Facebook campus is its college directory. So the classes that you're enrolled in and your graduation year and all that good stuff that you include in your profile allows other people from your school to be able to find you and connect with you. Since it's a college only space that is dedicated specifically to the school that you're going to, you are able to create campus only events, which is very different from the Facebook app. On the Facebook app, you create an event and like, you know, anybody can come. But now, the events that you create within Facebook Campus are strictly for that community. So, what does the launch of Facebook Campus mean for you? Well, if you're in college, or you recently graduated, or you work at a university, it's something that you should probably consider. We are still in the midst of a pandemic, and it has become increasingly important for us to find meaningful ways to stay connected. And this might help you do just that. 
Schools across the country have implemented partial or full-time remote learning. And I don't know about you, but I think it's a little difficult to meet new people online, especially when you never met them in person. So this is a great opportunity to do just that, especially for those who are freshmen, they're beginning their first year of college. How are you gonna bump into somebody at the library or the coffee shop or at the football game? Those things are not really a thing anymore. And so this presents a great opportunity to still have that connection without that face-to-face -face interaction. Now, one thing to note is Facebook Campus is not available to all colleges and universities. Currently, they're doing a small rollout with 30 schools that are a combination of Ivy League schools, private schools, state schools, you name it. A little small test population to kind of work out the kinks. So if you are an administrator or you work at a college or a university and Facebook campus is not yet there, it's a discussion that you need to have. Bring it up at the staff meeting. See how you guys can partner with Facebook to bring this experience to your students. The fact that Facebook campus only allows you to post in groups, events, or chats really allows you to take control back of your social media. You don't have to be worried about stumbling across something that you don't wanna see or you know, social media drama. This is a streamlined experience that is only specific to your college or university and the events and the happenings there. No outside drama, no outside noise. You get what you need and you come out. Now, the demographic on Facebook skews older. So most college age students or teenagers and stuff like that would much rather opt for Instagram or Snapchat over Facebook any day. I mean, most of them don't even have Facebook accounts. So this is a pretty interesting move. Do you think that this was smart for them to create this section of the app? Do you think it will see success? Will you use it? Have you used it? Let me know in the comments below. Now let's talk about what's trending. Instagram's algorithm change. We're gonna discuss what's going on and what you can do to boost your content engagement and visibility organically. Over the past couple of months, Instagram users across the world have noticed a significant drop in their post reach and engagement, myself included. Many noticed the change, but didn't start talking up about it until recently. Influencers and various public figures began having honest dialogue with their audience about what was going on. They spoke about the low likes, the low comments, and just the lack of visibility of people that they actually follow. They're looking on their timeline, they don't see posts from their family, they don't see posts from their friends, and now the mind is starting to wonder what's going on. Instagram being Instagram has done it again. Yep, another algorithm change. And we're not asking whether or not they changed the algorithm because it's quite obvious that they did. We don't even wanna know why they changed it because we don't care. What we want to know is what we can do to organically boost the visibility of our posts. What we want to know is why the posting strategy that was so successful last week and last month is not working now. We have questions and they need answers. There are a couple theories floating around the factors that play regarding the decrease in engagement on Instagram. Now out of all of the theories out there, I narrowed it down to the top four. The first theory around the decrease in Instagram engagement is the shadow ban. Now a shadow ban is when hashtag content does not appear in explore pages. So people use hashtags in order to get their content in front of a broader audience. So you put like hashtag black girl magic and anybody who types on that hashtag will stumble across their content. Now what people are noticing is that when they hashtag content, only their viewers, so only the people who are already following them are able to view that content. They're not reaching any new eyeballs. Instagram allows you to upload up to 30 hashtags in a post. And so now what people have done to kind of be a little bit more efficient is instead of kind of figuring out their hashtags that they're using on the fly, they make hashtag groups because you know they're trying to reach the same audience, they consistently post about the same thing, so they're fairly using the same hashtag for all of their posts. And so it kind of comes off to Instagram's algorithm or the bots or whatever that they have moderating the platform as spammy behavior. Like, okay, every time this person posts, they're posting this whole chunk of the same hashtag, and so it kind of flags it as like, hmm, maybe something fishy is going on here. 
any kind of bot behavior kind of raises a red flag. And so the use of like all of these hashtags that are like consistently being used, the same one over and over, the same group over and over in all of your posts, it's like, okay, is it really you or is it somebody else? Another reason for a shadow ban is when you use a hashtag that is currently um, being banned from the platform. So I don't know if you remember like a couple years ago, they had like the hashtag eggplant, you know, emoji that was like a thing and it wasn't about the fruit or the vegetable. Is it a fruit or is it a vegetable? The hashtag eggplant emoji wasn't about the produce, right? It was about a body part and Instagram had to, you know, disable the hashtag eggplant emoji. They had to disable the word eggplant. And so if you're using a hashtag that has been flagged as inappropriate, you're gonna be shadow banned. So a great way to kind of come around that is before you even use your hashtag, to type it into the search and look it up and see if there's any content restrictions, if it's flagged that, or if it's been paused and that, you know, that you have like that prompt that comes up that says, you know, this hashtag has been flagged for violating community guidelines, you know, like we are restricting use for right now or something like that. So you wanna make sure that you're not using hashtags that are currently banned. Instagram denies the existence of a shadow ban. It's a term that they don't use and they never have, but it's important to note the loophole here that just because they don't call it a shadow ban doesn't mean that the behavior under that label isn't still happening. The head of Instagram addressed concerns and questions around the shadow ban in 2019, and let me read it to you and you come up with your own takeaway. Head of Instagram, Adam Masseri says, shadow banning is not a thing. If someone follows you on Instagram, your photos and videos can show up in their feed if they keep using the feed. Being in Explore is not guaranteed for anyone. Sometimes you'll get lucky, sometimes you won't. Now, when answering the question, why don't I see my post under the hashtag, he says, some people don't realize this, but we don't actually show every post with a hashtag under that hashtag. We try to show people the ones that they might be the most interested in. This is to try and keep hashtag pages interesting, but also to avoid spam and abuse. Take from it what you will. The second theory around low user engagement on Instagram is third-party apps. Now, specifically third-party apps that go against Instagram's terms of service, mainly bots. You know, those apps that kind of do mass actions, like mass following, mass liking, mass commenting, that kind of spammy behavior kind of raises a red flag. You don't want to use any apps that allow you to follow a bunch of people at one time or unfollow a bunch of people at one time or comment on a bunch of people's, just the mass activity, anything that's being done in large groups, you kind of want to refrain from that. But also, a little caveat here is that you want to make sure that you're using third-party apps that are Instagram approved partners. So a lot of people, myself included, and a lot of Instagram managers and stuff out there, you guys are using third party apps for automation purposes so that you don't have to sit down and post your post in real time. You can schedule and plan ahead for tomorrow, next week, next year, whenever. And so Instagram has very strict guidelines and restrictions around how they want third parties to integrate with their platforms. And so if you're using a third party app that is outside of their guidelines and they haven't been approved by Instagram, that could be a reason why you are experiencing low user engagement because Instagram is recognizing that, you know, this is somebody or this is an app that's going against what it wants to allow on the platform. And so we're just kind of gonna suppress your content. And so when looking for third-party automation apps, what you wanna do is just take the extra step to go on that third-party apps website. And on that website, if you keep scrolling, you keep scrolling, down somewhere, you'll be able to see a badge that says Instagram approved partner, Instagram verified partner. Now that is like the most, one of the most legitimate ways that you can make sure that you're using a third party app that will not negatively influence your user engagement on Instagram. 
The third theory around low user engagement on Instagram is that Instagram is now a pay to play space. And that theory is not really far fetched because if we're being honest, what social media platform is it? Every social platform is trying to make money and how do they make money? Through ads. So if they decrease your visibility and they decrease your reach, you will then pay to get your content in front of more eyes. It's just simple like that. Now the fourth and final theory around the decrease of user engagement on Instagram is consistency. Now all social media platforms favor consistency. One, they want you to stay on the platform, but two, the less frequently you post, the less likely your audience is to see your content. The less likely your audience is to see your content, the less likely they are to engage with it. The less likely they are to engage with it, you know, the cycle repeats. So if you're not posting consistently, Instagram is not going to put your content at the top of people's feeds because you're not someone that they can rely on to be, you know, consistent in your output. And Instagram kind of prides itself on showing users the accounts of those that they like and that they follow that they consistently interact with. People can't consistently interact with your content if you're not putting them out or if you're not putting any out consistently. It's like once a week, once a month, once a year, you know what I'm saying? And if their mindset is we are going to show people the accounts that they consistently interact with, if your account is not one of them because you're not being consistent, then there goes your answer. Now, although there may be some validity to these theories, not everyone falls into these categories. Growth marketing expert Emily De La Cruz took to Instagram to share how her call with the Facebook ad rep gave some much needed insight on how to hack Instagram's algorithm. Now, as you know, Facebook owns Instagram. Take a listen. I have access to resources that the everyday small business owner doesn't have, including a Facebook rep, a Facebook account manager, helps us leverage and know the latest and greatest when it comes to Facebook ads. In my call with our ads rep two weeks ago, she said something that literally just like clicked in my head as I've been seeing the algorithm thing happening. Facebook is starting to prioritize something called mobile first, meaning they're prioritizing videos that are portrait and videos that are 15 seconds or less. Where do videos that are 15 seconds or less and portrait live? Reels? stories, IGTV. Don't say I don't tell y'all nothing. Now, take a moment to let that sink in. Once you sit back and look at it, you realize that the writing is not only on the wall, but it always has been. Instagram, the once photo only platform, which launched in 2010, has been pivoting to video since 2013 when they first allowed us to start sharing 15 second video clips to our feed in response to Vine. Then we fast forward a little bit further. In 2015, they introduced Boomerang. We fast forward a little bit more to 2016 and they introduced Instagram stories, which was their response to Snapchat. Then later that year, we got IG Live. Fast forward a little bit more, we get to 2018 and Instagram announces IGTV. And now in 2020, they have most recently announced Reels, which is their response to, you guessed it, TikTok. So what is the theme here? Are you getting it? That's right, video. If video wasn't working, Instagram would have pivoted away from it a long time ago. Nobody in their right mind continues to do something that's not working. So obviously, it's working. Let's unpack the top two ways that you can organically hack Instagram's algorithm using video content. The first way that you can use video content to hack Instagram's algorithm is by getting your audience to see your content in chronological order again. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, girl, 
we haven't had a chronological feed since like 2016. But what I want you to realize is that through Instagram stories, Instagram live and reels, you can allow your audience to see your content in real time. So they're not gonna see your sale post or whatever major messaging that you have three days after you needed them to see it. With Instagram stories, Instagram stories continues to push your content to the top of your followers feed every time you post. So every time you post, it brings you right to the front again. Every time you post, it brings you right to the front again. You don't just, it's not, there's no algorithm there. It's like whoever posted last gets posted first. You get what I'm saying? You follow what I'm saying? Then with Reels, Reels is Instagram's latest product. And whatever they post, whenever they come out with a new product, they're always boosting that product's visibility in their audience feed because they want people to use it. And so Instagram is that new product. They want people to use it. They e they're even um, in the process of figuring out placement of a Reels button in your navigation bar so that you can just kind of go to it just like how you go to the Explore page and stuff like that, just a one-two click kind of thing. And so start making Reels, right? It's their newest product, start testing it out and I guarantee you that you will see a boost in your visibility. It will kind of push you up to the top of your audience feed. Now Instagram Live is a real time thing where you get to talk to your audience in real time at a set time, at a set date. And similar to Instagram Stories, when you go live, whoever's live that you follow, it's the first couple of stories or icons that you see at the top of your feed. So if they're live at the moment, you'll see it in real time. And so what you wanna do is you wanna capitalize on that. You wanna go live, but then also after you're live, you wanna make sure that you save that live to IGTV and then share a little preview post to your feed. And it's, you know, you have that nice little full circle moment. So you engage with people in real time on live, and then you also have video content for your feed because you're saving it to IGTV you're posting a little preview, and then they can go to your IGTV to watch what they missed on live. They're staying there. Video, remember, is the most engaging type of content. Just because of its nature, it allows you to stay on the platform or to stay on the post longer, so you're already increasing your engagement because people have to, you know, stay a while to watch the video. So, Get back to posting content in real time. Get back to allowing people to see your stuff in chronological order again. The second way for you to hack Instagram's algorithm through the use of video content is by creating vertical video. Now, I'm sorry to break the news to you, but not all video is created equal, okay? So on Instagram, you have the option of creating a square video, you do the landscape video, which is like horizontal, or you can do the vertical video. Vertical video is where it's at, okay? Number one, we already know that video content gets more engagement and more visibility and all that good stuff, but the vertical video takes up more of your screen space. So of course you could do the square, and of course you could do the landscape, but if you notice, when you're scrolling on Instagram, it's the vertical content that takes more than one swipe. I'm one of those people that's kind of like weird, like I figured that out, like I don't know how long ago, like a couple years ago, not just with video, but just vertical content in general. Like if you go to my feed, at Neffy Anderson, all of my content, like majority of my content, 99.9% .9 of my content is vertical. I have vertical photos, vertical video, because I just noticed that when I'm scrolling, that it takes longer, like people have to take like two or three taps to kind of like get to the next post because the content is taking so much of the screen space. So that's where the money is at, because it's like, <laughs> you, can't, you can't get away from me, because you know what I'm saying? Whereas with the, sh the, the square video or the landscape video, it's like, oh, one swipe and you're on to the next one. But with the vertical video, it literally takes up your whole screen. And so therefore people spend more time on it. And the fact that they kind of have to like tap or scroll twice or three times makes them like, oh, let me take a moment to look and see what's actually going on here. So vertical video is where it's at. And 
you don't have to do anything extensive. You could do a boomerang, you could do a time lapse, reels like we discussed. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but whatever you're doing, whatever you're posting, make sure that it's vertical. So let's recap. What does Instagram's algorithm change mean for you? Well, it means that video is key to content engagement and visibility. It means that all video is not created equal and that vertical video is where it's at. It means that you need to start getting in front of your audience in chronological order again. You need to start making reels and IG lives and Instagram stories. It means that you have to be more responsible with your hashtag use and not give up any kind of spammy behavior. It means that you have to be more uh, cognizant of the third-party apps that you're using. You wanna make sure that you're not using anybody that goes against Instagram's third-party guidelines or community guidelines. And it means that you wanna make sure that you're having fun. And last, but certainly not least, it means that you wanna make sure you're posting consistently. Consistent posting and engagement is the key to success on any social media platform. Wishing you the best of luck. In the comments, let me know if you've seen a decrease in your engagement on Instagram and if these tips were helpful. Pinterest has recently updated its algorithm to prioritize video and better recommend relevant content to its users. Now this is important information because Pinterest is a visual search engine. But when you think Pinterest, you don't think video. You think pictures, you think infographics, you think step-by-step -step image tutorials. Pinterest is kind of like if Google and your vision board had a baby, this would be it. Pinterest is the ultimate social media platform for ideas, planning, and inspiration. Pinterest has been helping people manifest things before manifesting things became trendy. You wanna learn how to decorate your house or apartment? Go to Pinterest. You wanna figure out what to wear for a job interview or a date? Go to Pinterest. You wanna learn how to make that fire meal from your favorite restaurant? Go to Pinterest. You wanna get a met? Go to Pinterest. 89% of people on Pinterest say it's where they go for purchase decisions and inspiration. 85% of pinners say it's their go-to destination when starting a new project. So needless to say, video is very much so a welcome shift. And if you didn't know, across all social media platforms, video is the most, the most engaging content type. And yes, that includes Twitter, that includes LinkedIn, that includes Facebook, that includes Instagram, that includes you fill in the blank. So what does Pinterest prioritizing video mean for you? Well, for one, it means that if you aren't already creating video content, you need to incorporate it into your marketing mix ASAP. As we already discussed, video is the most engaging content type, so if you're not creating it, you're already operating under your potential. Now, if you want to post video to Pinterest, you need to know that in order to do so, it requires a business Pinterest account. Now, you can either create a free Pinterest business account or you can convert your personal account into a Pinterest account. But that's the number one requirement. You will not, you will not, can you say with me? You will not, I will not be able to post video to Pinterest unless I have a Pinterest business account. In addition to having a Pinterest business account, the requirements around posting video to that platform include having a minimum video length of four seconds or a maximum video length of 15 minutes. Now the specs can either be square, which is one by one, or vertical, which is two by three, four by five, or nine by 16. Now people have experienced a lot of great success repurposing their Instagram story content for Pinterest because the specs are the same. Now there are tons of video content that you can create for Pinterest. How to's, tutorials, product demos, you name it. And if you're already creating video content, this is a great opportunity for you to rethink your distribution model and where your content lives, right? It shouldn't just live on YouTube or on Facebook. Figure out how you can kind of stretch it and get the most out of it. 
And don't forget, one of the best things about Pinterest is that you can use your content to drive viewers elsewhere, right? So you can use your video pins to take people to your YouTube channel, to your product page, to your website. Pinterest is one of those social platforms where people come with the expectancy to click through somewhere else. So do not miss on that opportunity. Are you already posting video content to Pinterest? If not, will you start? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to put your Pinterest name and the type of content that you post there because you never know who's looking for what you have. Right about now, your mind might be swirling around how you can better incorporate Pinterest into your marketing strategy, which is a perfect segue for if this, then that. If this, then that is an automation tool that allows productivity, lifestyle, and social media apps to work together in ways that they normally wouldn't. After nine years of offering their services for free, they recently announced a paid subscription service and people are not too happy about it. Now let me take a step back to explain what I mean when I say that if this then that allows apps to work together in ways that they normally wouldn't. So a few examples. If this then that will allow you to post a picture to Instagram and then automatically have that picture be saved to your Pinterest board as a pin. Or create a Google Doc of all of the tweets that you have ever liked. Or create a YouTube playlist of all of the songs that you like on Spotify. Things like that. You kind of catch my drift? These triggers are called applets and can be created and used by anyone. So anything that you wish could happen between your favorite apps that you like to use, you can actually make it happen. Now prior to this announcement, this was all free, but now things have changed. Under the free model, you can use an unlimited amount of applets. However, you have a three applet creation limit. Now under the pro version, they're hooking you up. Not only do you have an unlimited amount of applet creation triggers, you also can have applets that have multiple actions. So for example, if you have a smart home, right, your applet can allow when somebody rings the doorbell for the music to be turned off, for the fan to turn on, and for the garage to open. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if this, then that, then that, then that. They're also offering um, faster service or faster speed of the applet triggers as well as customer support. So now you're probably wondering, all right, what's the price of Pro? Now, what does if this then that Pro subscription model mean for you? Well, if you don't create your own applets and you don't have the desire for your applets to do multiple triggers, then nothing, your life is unchanged. However, if you are an applet creator, I would really suggest that you take the time to do research before creating new applets since there is a three creation limit if you do not go with the pro service. And what I've come across is that there are multiple applets that do the same thing. And it's like, did no one research before creating a new trigger? So you don't want to waste the, your, you know, your uh, three applet limit by creating an applet that already exists. So for those of you who are creating, I would suggest that you do your due diligence to make sure that whatever it is that you want to create isn't already out there. Whether or not you create your own applets, I would strongly sit down and consider how this pro subscription model impacts your life. Because whenever somebody or a company starts charging for things that they never used to charge for before, it's very rare that they kind of go back to that free model, you know? So if I were you, I would consider looking into alternatives and seeing what other apps or options there are out there. Diversify your options a bit. If this, then that has been helping people work smarter, not harder for years. I mean, they have been on the front lines. So comment below and let me know what you think about the switch. Do you use the app? Do you use any alternatives? Have you created triggers and applets of your own? I'd love to hear what you have to say. And now for my favorite part of the show, the tip of the week. Now, this week's tip of the week is to go live. But I know what you're thinking, Nephi. We know about going live. Everybody's been going live, especially in quarantine, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, YouTube Live, you name it. 
But there is a platform that is a best kept secret. And that platform is the website of the world's second largest retailer. Can you guess? Can you guess? Can you guess? Amazon. Amazon Live is the best kept secret. Amazon Live is kind of like the digital version of QVC. It is the perfect opportunity for people who either sell products on Amazon or are Amazon influencers like myself, who have an Amazon storefront with our curated list of products and things that we recommend. Now, this is a great space to just sell things. You can do demos, you can do how-tos on the products that you own, the products that you're selling, the products that you have affiliate links for. It's just kind of like the best kept secret because everyone shops on Amazon. And what better way to kind of figure out what it is that you want to buy, if you want to buy it, by tuning in to see that product in action or to hear about how it's being used by your favorite influencer. So this is such a great opportunity for those people who are in the selling space. For those, This is a great opportunity for those people who are selling on Amazon and for those who are frequent buyers. So if you're not a part of the Amazon Influencer Program, put that on your to-do list to do so that you can go ahead and go live and just tell your story and share why these products are your favorite and you get a nice little commission on the back end. That's it for today's show. Thank you so much for watching. I keep tabs on this stuff so that you don't have to. Please use the hashtag social media unpacked and tag me at Nephi Anderson to let me know your thoughts on the show, if there's any topics that you want me to dive into deeper in the future, and feel free to visit nephianderson.com if you're interested in working together for me to help you build your brand or business using social media. Until next time, bye.